A few days ago, I received a link to the Brutal beta disc from Subsorian, the guy responsible for StarCraft's wiki, collectioner of all things StarCraft and a huge lore buff. This is an interesting resource, insofar I don't think it's been publicly available before. You can take a look at it yourself, there's going to be a link in the description. What I immediately wanted to check out were the AI scripts. I'm a huge fan of the way StarCraft's AI works, and all my modding essentially boils down to trying to integrate that AI with modern level design. In the past, I could never find any differences between current SCR AI scripts and archival AI from version 1.0, apart from some low-level bugs that were added in Remastered. This time though, we got very lucky. With some help from Darkened Fantasies over at the Star Edit Discord, I was able to open the scripts and it looks like they are a snapshot of what the scripts look like early into Brood Wars development. Unfortunately, we can only see the work in progress editions of episode 4 and skirmish scripts, with episode 5 and 6 scripts being entirely empty. Of interest, there are no entries for Zerg missions 9 and 10, so it could be that the Zerg campaign wasn't yet planned to have 10 missions. I'm going to go over all the worthwhile changes from the Protoss campaign and talk just a bit about melee. All changes are going to be shown via a div tool, where lines highlighted in green are additions in the final versions of the game, and red lines are what's removed from the beta version. I won't be going into AI commands here, but usually it's really easy to ascertain what they do based on their names. If you happen to be interested in learning more about the AI, in the description I will include a link to a document that should be helpful. The doc itself is written by me, but it's based on a really old AI documentation by Heinerman, and it's made with a lot of help from Nave. Starting off with episode 4, mission 2, the dunes of Shakuras, we can immediately see two things that will just keep showing up in later scripts. Build priorities for the town hall and first few workers going way down, and a significant portion of defense units getting removed in the final version of the script. The second change makes a lot of sense. As Brood War missions kept getting iterated on, it was probably pretty clear that players at the time were really struggling to attack an AI's base. Even now, if you watch a playthrough of someone playing StarCraft for the first time, they will often attack the AI with pretty small groups of units. And the way the campaign AI works, it will react to small attacks really well, often in a manner that prevents the player from leaving any lasting damage. If you don't know any better and you just keep on making these small attacks, it can feel pretty hard to do anything. Notably, the AI here also used to get some Guardians and Ultralisks. Since this is the first macro mission in this campaign, it isn't much of a surprise that those ended up getting removed as well. The pra priority I really hate this word. The priority change is a bit harder to explain, but essentially it makes the AI slightly worse at rebuilding from scratch. It's not really a huge deal, it's probably a really rare enough scenario that the AI gets to rebuild at all. In later parts of the script, there are also some voids getting bigger and upgrade priors tweaked. Priority 80 for upgrades was pretty high, and could definitely cause issues for AIs that lost parts of their base, so this was a good change to make. Whenever we see weights change, they will generally only go up. Here, instead of waiting 1,500 frames twice, the AI waits for 3,000 frames and 6,000 frames before the next attack. We can also see Hydralisk upgrades inserted. I can't be sure, because campaign maps are not included on the beta disk, but I think it might have been the case that in the first iteration of these maps, the AI just had many upgrades researched by default that were not included in the script. There are still several maps like that in the final version of the game. There's nothing super exciting in Legacy of the Zelnaga. There are some priority changes, some unit limits, a tiny tweak on the force of allowed defenders. Still, it's really cool for me to see those tiny changes. They are almost inconsequential to the player, but as a former game designer I can relate with just the sentiment of tweaking something toward either our idea of how it should feel like, or just towards the feedback from production or QA. Later in the script, we see a snare and spawn broodling inserted in the final version. It's likely that once again they were enabled map site at first, but eventually timed in the script instead. In fact, there's more proof yet that this is the case. 
Those abilities specifically don't have default configs in the final map settings, so they were definitely changed at some point. In the quest for Urash, we see Wraiths getting removed as potential defenders against ground and air attacking ground, and limits properly defined in the beginning of the script. Limits are generally good to include, and were often omitted in episodes 1 to 3, so it's nice to see the progression here. Even though the Battle of Praxis doesn't really use any AI scripts, its entries are used for the temple attack sequence in Protoss 8. We can see that originally they were run as towns, with some obsolete syntax, as you can't really build casters with the build command in the final version of the game, and there's an opcode that currently does nothing in campaigns, target expansion. It's hard to say what it was originally supposed to do. The compositions of attacks in this script change significantly, but they are still mostly medium-sized groups of Zerg. In the attacks that are used for the brown player in Protoss 8, we see something interesting. A reference to unit ID 91. This unit is just labeled as unused in the beta files, and in the final game someone got the name cargo ship for it, but I think this had to be the lurker unit ID for some time. I'm not sure why it got moved around, but there are some other instances of Unit 91 used in Zerg scripts, and they are often eventually succeeded by Lurker appearances. Lurkers themselves already existed in the game, and they are used by the melee AI in the beta. One more thing to note here is that beta scripts used casters way more often than the final game's AI does. The caster use was probably identified as a source of frustration during whatever testing Brutal had, and was toned down. Return to Charles Orange is probably the first AI player we see here to get something of a buff in the final version of the game, with a bigger defense force allowed and lurkers added to the script. Its attacks are also generally bigger, but the AI also waits a long as time in between them. Overall, Orange and Brown are potentially the most altered scripts in terms of how different their attacks were. Brown can also be seen using the mysterious Unit 91. But if it were Logos, they ended up going to Orange. The Insurgent greets us with classic limit definitions and improved defense. This mission got tweaked to use way more Archons and way less High Templars over time. It's possible that, initially, Bob Fitch was a bit wary of adding Archons, as there are some bugs with the way the AI uses them, some of which can even result in a crash. And all of them are still there in Remastered. Other than that, it's more of what we already expect. Larger weights between attacks, upgrade priority changes. I found the one scout nerf in the final version to be just a bit humorous. I wonder if anyone actually lost in a way that would necessitate that one, or if it ended up feeling like Aldaris is too air focused. We have already seen some changes to Countdown's AIs before, and the ones we can see in the dedicated scripts should once again be familiar to us. It's of note that Red used to refer to Unit 91, but now it clearly refers to Lurkers instead. Red was also severely nerfed after the beta, with his final attack loop being completely removed. That's everything for the campaign scripts. Mini ones are really hard to read, but you can see them doing stuff in the background. I'm pretty sure that the gist of their changes is that in the beta they only had a single branch for land maps and a single branch for island maps. In the final game, the AI can opt in for some different rushes and so on, but here it will just always do the same thing. So in short, they are just very unfinished. For example, the Protoss do their Zealot rush 100% of the time, which arguably makes the script better. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope it was interesting. It's kind of awkwardly technical, I'm sure, but for me it's really cool to see a work-in-progress snapshot of how the StarCraft campaigns were developed. I hope to make some more content on Brewers AI in the future.